The HPS silicon radiator hose kit wasn't anything I was really planning on buying. I just put it on a wish list, and one morning I saw it was half off, so I picked it up. It's more of an engine dress-up item than a performance item, uh, but the silicon hoses will last longer than the traditional rubber hoses. As you can see here, it includes all five radiator hoses, and it also has a license plate frame and all of the clamps that you'll need. This is the full kit that includes the upper radiator hose right here, the lower radiator hose, which is down here, the upper reservoir hose, which is this one here, the lower reservoir hose, which is here, and then the hose that connects the reservoir and the upper radiator hose to the top of the radiator, which is right here. It also includes a metal Y to replace the plastic one right here. Before installing, I went ahead and made sure that all the clamps matched up to the hoses, and I'm glad I checked because they gave me two useless clamps that were too small for the smallest hose. Uh, they did give me an extra clamp that was one size up, so I have it on this side. And I went to Home Depot and got a matching clamp for this end. So make sure all the clamps match up. Next, we're gonna drain the radiator. So make sure you've got a large enough catch pan, a funnel, I'm going to use vice grips to help get the old clamps off, and then since I have the red fluid in the car, which you should as well, red fluid. So both of those bottles are the same thing, it's just a change in style. But you can confirm your fluid by looking in your overflow reservoir. If you look underneath of your car, you will see this opening right here in the splash shield. This is directly underneath the petcock to drain the radiator. So you're going to want to put your catch pan underneath of that, like that. Wait for your engine to be fully cooled off before removing the radiator cap. Unlike some of the other cars that you may have worked on, there is no actual radiator cap here. Everything is done through the overflow tank. So just remove the cap from here and set it aside. It's hard to see from up here, but if you reach your hand down behind here to the corner of your radiator, uh, you'll see there's this yellow petcock. You're going to want to turn that counterclockwise, and that'll let the fluid come out of the bottom. Go ahead and reach your hand down, and open up the petcock, and you'll hear it start draining. If you can, try to capture some of that fluid in a plastic cup so you can make sure that it's completely clear. If it's cloudy, it could indicate a head gasket leak, um, with that oil getting into the coolant. And if it's brown and rusty, it could just mean that you've got some rust inside the system, in which case you'll probably want to flush the system sooner than later. While you wait for it to finish draining, go ahead and remove any plastic clips. This one here you can remove by simply squeezing this together and then pushing it apart. Uh, there's another clip down here that you'll have to also remove, and I think that's basically it. While it continues to drain, go ahead and just remove all of the hose clamps that you can using uh, Vice grips, just slide them down out of the way. Getting the hose clamp for this one here is going to require taking the battery out so you can get around to the back side. So disconnect the negative terminal first with a 10 millimeter and then the positive. And then you can just unscrew this one here, also the 10 millimeter and here. Remove the battery bracket, take the battery out. Once it's done fully draining and you've got all the clamps off, just go ahead and just start pulling all of the hoses off. In order to remove the plastic Y piece here, you're going to need to pinch the sides together for this piece. Lift it up, and then you'll see that you can pinch these two pieces together here with pliers and then push this out. When pulling the hose off the radiator down here, make sure you have gloves on because you will most likely get fluid on yourself. And make sure the catch pan is still underneath of here because more fluid will come out. All the hoses are out. I will not lie, this lower hose was a real pain to get the vice grips around the clamps, but I was able to eventually get it. Fortunately, once you loosen the clamps, the hoses are actually pretty easy to remove. As you install the new hoses, uh, try to think about the best way to install the clamps so that you can access the screws, um, either with a flathead or a socket wrench. So I'm going to go ahead for this hose. I'm going to position this one this way and this one this way. So do that for all of them before you actually install the hoses. One down, four to go. Using a small socket wrench with a 932nd socket, uh, along with a handle that also fits the smaller sockets, will make tightening down the clamps a lot easier. Two down. Uh, 
The clip here that went here and held the O2 sensor wire in place is going to be too big now at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and just remove it. The other clip here will still function to hold the hose in place, sort of. Three down, two to go. When you go ahead and tighten down these clamps, don't over tighten them. You'll tighten them down and you'll get to a point where they don't want to turn anymore. Just give them a little bit more of a turn and leave them there. You don't want to tighten it too much because it is only plastic underneath most of these hose connections. Four down. And that makes five. I went ahead and aimed the uh, worm screw clamp on this side down so that I can just take a socket on here to tighten it. The Y fitting has no way to mount to the frame here. Uh, originally, I just ran a zip tie to hold it in place, but then it was basically uh, scratching up the paint a little bit on here. So what I did was I took two of my largest beveled washers and I set them on the front like that. And then I ran the zip tie through the hole, through the washer on the top, and then through the washer on the bottom and then zip tied it in here. So this way it keeps it isolated from here. At this point, pop this plastic back into place and then reinstall the battery and then connect the positive cable first and then the negative. If you haven't already, go ahead and reach down and close off the petcock valve. <sighs> and then we're going to go ahead and start refilling the overflow reservoir tank until it's at the full mark. Keep adding fluid to the reservoir tank to the full point until it stops going down. Uh, it will take a while for all of the fluid to get into the uh, hoses and between all the fins. Check under the car for any leaks and clean up any coolant if spilt immediately with newspaper and cat litter. And anything that you can't soak up, wash away. You don't want to leave any fluid on the ground for any domestic or uh, wildlife to drink. As we're waiting for all the coolant to go into the system, go ahead and squeeze this upper radiator hose. Um, that will help also get any air bubbles out. It took about a gallon and a half of coolant, but it finally stops dropping in levels, meaning it's about time to perp the system. Uh, we're gonna simply leave the radiator cap off, start up the engine, and then uh, let it idle. Make sure the heat's turned on in the car. And what we wanna do is get the fans to kick on here. And when they kick on, that means the thermostat's opened and that'll let the trapped air out. And you'll notice the level drop down. When that happens, we'll just add some more fluid. And now we sit and wait. In fact, I've already noticed that the fluid is going down already a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more coolant to it right now. With the engine running, again, check underneath the car to make sure there are no leaks. You can speed up the process of getting the thermostat to open by holding the car at 2,500 RPMs. The coolant level has finally stopped dropping and it's holding steady at full. So I'm going to go ahead, put the cap back on, and then go for a 5 to 10 minute drive. And then come back and then check where the levels are at. If they've dropped any more, I'm going to wait for the engine to cool down and then add more fluid. And if it doesn't, then we're good to go. If you're a little unsure about the amount of fluid that you've put back into your system, you can empty out the pan into the old container and you should basically have the same amount of fluid that you uh, put in come back out. Uh, you might need another container though. I have an extra one in my shed uh, because this one still has a little more than half. So when I fill this up and the other container, I should have a little less than a gallon and a half of old fluid. I just got back from my drive, I let the engine cool down a little bit, and it looks like the coolant level is about the same. So that means the air should be out of the system at this point. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to keep the extra coolant with me in the trunk along with the funnel, uh, and then periodically check on this for the next day or two just to make sure it doesn't go down anymore. Um, I hope this helps you out if you're thinking about getting some HPS uh, radiator hoses for your car. Thanks for watching.